Hey, Mushroom Nerds. It's Anna McHugh. I'm spending a little bit of time with a cold weather mushroom uh, that has the common name the Orange Mock Oyster Mushroom. And uh, the scientific name here is Phyllotopsis nigelans. And as I said, this is a cold weather species that is really orangey all over, but it does bear some resemblance to oyster mushrooms, hence the common name. It does have another common name, which is the stinking mock oyster mushroom. Reason being that some collections, not all, but some, including this one, have what I would describe as a sort of unpleasant, rotting, dark greens or brassica or cabbagey smell is what some guidebooks call it. So imagine sort of the bottom of a musty compost pail or perhaps a house where there are too many vegans that eat too many brassicas and produce too many brassica farts. Anyway, it is not a super appealing aroma, and uh, this is not an edible mushroom, or, um, you know, it is, it is not considered toxic, but it is certainly not on the list of mushrooms that people consider to be uh, edible and good. However, it's really beautiful, and uh, during cold weather, you know, it's December, there's not a lot of uh, fleshy fruiting bodies for me to observe, so I enjoy every moment I can get, even with uh, this fairly uh, aromatic mushroom. So let's talk about identification. First of all, it is, as I mentioned, a gilled mushroom, and it grows in these sort of overlapping fruiting bodies. Unlike uh, your sort of common oyster mushroom species, of which there are several, Phyllotopsis nigelans does not have a stem. It just sort of attaches uh, like right smack dab in the middle of the fruiting body. And uh, a lot of like classic oyster mushrooms, they have a rudimentary stem. It's sort of lumpy and typically not very long, and it will be a little bit off center normally. And so, uh, you know, Phyllotopsis nigelans does not have that feature. Um, the gills are deep and blade-like. If you take a spore print, it's sort of a pinky color. Uh, but, you know, the overall oranginess makes this mushroom very distinctive. And, uh, you know, there are a few things that look somewhat similar but um, they are not this bright orangey, uh, you know, color. Another feature that's very good for this mushroom identification wise is it tends to be a little bit fuzzy, furry, velvety on top. And as the mushroom ages, it sort of starts to turn, uh, you know, a dull brown color. And you also really commonly will see sort of a white blush of uh, sort of fuzziness. And uh, so, you know, this mushroom, you can see it's almost like a whitish patina. Uh, but yeah, the fuzziness is really another feature that distinguishes this from other mushrooms. Uh, gosh, the Tapanellus genus uh, that uh, it has some similar sort of colorful fruiting bodies that are more on the yellow side of things, but they are not furry on top. Uh, another sort of group of mushrooms that I see that are furry on top, and also they have the gills and the like no stem situation that these mushrooms have are in the Lentinellus genus. So uh, we have the bear Lentinellus and I think uh, the fox Lentinellus. Anyway, the one that I see the most frequently is Lentinellus ursinus, which is the uh, bear Lentinellus, I think is the best common name I can, I can think of off the top of my head. Maybe it has another one. But anyway, it is uh, very similar to this. It tends to be a little bit smaller and it's not nearly as common in cold weather, but it's a little bit furry on top and it has has the, uh, you know, no stem and these sort of deep uh, blade-like gills, uh, but it is much more pale in, in color. And then the furriness on top is a nice dark uh, brown often. So it looks a little bit uh, furry and like a itty bitty little bear with gills underneath. So anyway, this is a really fun mushroom for me to find under sort of cooler conditions. And, uh, you know, it doesn't leave any sort of strong residue. So as with any wild mushroom that smells unpleasant, one of the first things that I do if it is really bad is uh, give myself a little isopropyl or witch hazel hand bath, but this is totally unnecessary in this case. So uh, yeah, Phyllotopsis nigelans, the orange mock oyster mushroom. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll 
finish on one last thing. So, uh, I'm not crazy about the common name reason being that it's sometimes kind of a pain when there is an edible mushroom like the oyster mushroom. And then you have an inedible mushroom that looks oh, somewhat similar, but really like if you're, if you're getting, if you're falling down the, the mushroom identification rabbit hole, some of the characteristics of mushrooms start to become really, really distinct and different from one another. And so for instance, like if I were to talk to you about this mushroom, the things that I just said about no stem and the color, uh, there's a lot there to, uh, you know, unpack. And so when you say it is uh, an orange oyster mushroom, then you're kind of like superimposing oyster mushroom onto this thing that has a very different stuff going on. Anyway, I mean, it's, it's not harmful. It just can cause a little bit in the way of confusion. Uh, and, you know, to that point, I oftentimes focus on learning the scientific names just because it's good practice for me, but it also helps me set up categories of things. And so I can understand relationships between stuff and that makes it easier and faster to learn things. And it sometimes helps with retention. Not always. Uh, as I've gotten further and further into my mushroom hobby over the years, I've also learned, you know, to temper my expectations of my ability to identify properly a mushroom by its current scientific name in the field. That is uh, something that I can do with a lot of stuff, but certainly not, uh, certainly not the majority or even close to the majority of things that I see. And so I pride myself on being a fast relearner. And so once I see a mushroom a few times and I get to know it, I get to know how it feels and smells and I become familiar with the habitats it's in, even if I learn it and then I forget the common name or the scientific name, I can always sort of reacquire that knowledge. And oftentimes I can reacquire it really quickly. And, uh, and sometimes that's awfully nice because scientific names change so fast that uh, the process of relearning occasionally is a process of rediscovering an organism that has been recategorized and we have more knowledge and understanding of. Anyway, I've gone on long enough about this lovely little critter, but uh, I do encourage you to get out in the winter time. There's a lot of interesting crust fungi and, you know, things that are a little, a little bit less, uh, you know, basket friendly as far as edibility is concerned, but a lot of just gorgeous, glorious things to observe throughout the winter. Anyway, I hope you're well. Uh, happy end of 2023, and I hope your 2024 treats you super well. In the meantime, enjoy yourself and find a billion mushrooms, or at least some. It's off-season. Let's temper our expectations. Let's find as many mushrooms as we can. Take care.